Okay, so today we are going to start with the new topic and that is uh, gases exchange, right? And how the gases exchange pathways uh, are involved in exchange of gases and uh, how we take in the air and then when the air enters into the gaseous exchange system and why there is a need of gaseous exchange system and how, when the air gets into the gaseous exchange system, how it passes through the different pathways and then how the exchange of gases takes place at the gaseous exchange surface, right? So in this chapter, we are going to talk about the gaseous exchange system first, then the human gaseous exchange system, we are going to focus on distribution of tissues, right? How the different tissues like smooth muscles, cardiac tissues, right? Uh, basement membranes, uh, epithelial tissues, they are organized. And uh, recognizing of the tissues means identification we will do. And then we will do the recognition of the uh, structures that how the uh, you can identify between the different structures of the gaseous exchange pathway that is trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, what are their adaptive features and how you can identify them with the help of diagrams. And then we will see the structure and function of the gaseous exchange system and then the gaseous exchange processes. Okay. So this is our chapter hai. and first we will talk about the main adaptations of the gaseous exchange system, right? And uh, uh, the adaptations of the gaseous exchange, the main adaptations of the gaseous exchange system are number one, that they are uh, involved in uh, cleaning and warming the air that is entering into the gaseous exchange system, right? So the first adaptation of the mammalian uh, gaseous exchange system or the human gaseous exchange system uh, is that it is involved in cleaning and warming the air that is entering into the, uh, the body, right? Cle how this cleaning and warming effect is produced by the body, that is, uh, we, we, we are going to see that how the trachea and cilia and mucus cells or the gland cells, how they are involved. Then the second adaptation is that it maximizes the surface area for the diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the blood and atmosphere. Why? Because the gaseous exchange system and the circulatory system, they are in close association with one another and they are linked with one another so that the gaseous exchange that can take place uh, efficiently because you know that uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide's medium in our body is blood. Right, and that's why gaseous exchange, when we are taking in air by the ventilation process, the air gets into the lungs and then the lungs should have an adequate supply or you can say should have an efficient supply of blood in its surrounding. Why it is important? Because if the blood will not be present, then definitely uh, uh, the medium will not be there to take the oxygen to all the cells or all the respiring tissues of your body. Are you getting me? So what are we doing? We are talking about the adaptations uh, uh, that we get because of the circulatory system and the gaseous exchange system, right? So the first adaptation is that it helps in cleaning and warming of the air. It helps to, the gaseous exchange system helps to increase the surface area because they have got alveoli. It minimizes the distance for diffusion because when the gaseous exchange system we talk about it starts from nostrils, right? And from nostrils, the the gas enters into the, uh, you can say, uh, the gas enters into the, uh, we can say the nasal cavity and then to the trachea and then to the bronchi. It means that these organs are away from the blood, means that they don't have a direct connection with the blood. Uh, they do have the blood circulation in their different parts, but definitely the gaseous exchange will, uh, between the blood and the uh, pathway is not possible. So this gaseous exchange system actually provides us these gaseous exchange surfaces here. And these gaseous exchange surfaces are called as alveoli. And they help in the exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen between the blood and the alveolar cavity. So this is the... Uh, third adaptation that it decreases the dif distance for diffusion because you know that oxygen is present in the atmosphere so it has to reach to our blood right 
and to take it to the blood obviously this is not possible that the air penetrates into the blood or from the external so from the external environment right so uh, this gaseous exchange system actually help us to uh, you can say reduce the distance for diffusion between the blood and the uh, atmosphere obviously aap dekho yahan se gaseous exchange ye jo system hai that is basically taking the air in and taking it to the gaseous exchange surface that is alveoli right so this is how the gaseous exchange system is decreasing the distance for diffusion between the blood and the uh, gaseous exchange pathway the fourth adaptation is that it maintains the gradient for diffusion what does it mean the ventilation process is taking place continuously number 1 number 2 and the blood that is entering into the uh, alveolar surrounding is deoxygenated blood right and that is being supplied by the pulmonary artery and after its oxygenated oxygenation the blood is brought back to the uh, heart right through pulmonary veins so this means that the continuous flow of blood is there pulmonary artery is bringing blood near to the alveolar lining right this one and uh, pulmonary vein taking it back to the heart right it is taking it back and it is taking it in and the ventilation process that is inhalation right and exhalation right exhalation that is continuously being uh, uh, you can say ventilating or creating a gradient between the blood and the alveolar cavity where the where the air is present right so this is these are the adaptations four adaptations of the gaseous exchange system and circulatory system so that it can help in the gaseous exchange between the body and the blood actual gaseous exchange to aapko pata hai blood aur alveolar cavity ke darmiyan mein hota hai na to uske liye gaseous exchange system jo hai ye sari adaptations rakhta hai jiske through gaseous exchange is possible right and why this gaseous exchange is important because you know that the gaseous exchange will provide oxygen to the respiring tissue so that they can do aerobic respiration right so multicellular organisms that have got deep tissues in their body they have got very less surface area so that's why these alveoli or the gaseous exchange surfaces basically kya karti hain reduce karti hain distance for diffusion ko increase karti hain surface area ko so that the you know, cells can be provided with oxygen and carbon dioxide oxygen and carbon dioxide can be diffused out from the body right so in humans the gaseous exchange surface uh, needs to be very thin taaki distance for diffusion kam ho right and uh, that gaseous exchange system surface is basically alveoli theek hai singular is alveolus and plural is alveoli and they are present inside the lungs right now let's have a look that where they are present right let's suppose this is the gaseous exchange pathway obviously it starts from nostrils right like here you can see the whole diagram right that is showing you the pathway that the nostrils say nasal cavity and then from nasal cavity it enters into the trachea and you can see that the trachea has got c shaped cartilaginous rings here and uh, uh, here you can also see that uh, trachea further splits into two tube like structures right each structure or each tube is entering it into its side lung right and they are called as bronchus singular is bronchus and plural is bronchi and they are called as bronchi and each bronchus of its side when enters into the lung aap yahan kya dekh rahe ho that they are further splitting into smaller tube like structures ab dekho sabse jo broad tube like structure hai wo trachea hai trachea split kar raha hai to smaller tubes ban rahi hain it means that the diameter of the uh, tubes is tubes are decreasing so this is the broadest this is again becoming smaller and then further it splits into smaller tube like structures right each tube further splits into even smaller tube like structures right so we can say uh, that they are getting narrower and narrower when they are entering into the lungs theek okay? hai ट्रेकिया का डायमीटर सबसे ज्यादा फिर ब्रोंका है फिर ब्रोंकियोल्स अब आपके ब्रोंकियोल्स जो होते हैं नाउ वैसे आपको पता है ब्रोंकियोल्स क्या होते हैं बट नाउ दे आर डिवाइडेड इनटू टू टाइप्स ऑफ ब्रोंकियोल्स ये ब्रोंकस है जो लेट मी लेट मी मेक इट अगेन फॉर यू राइट लेट्स सपोज 
दिस इज ट्रेकिया राइट ये आपका ट्रेक ये थोड़ा बड़ा करके बना रही हूं ताकि आपको इजिली नजर आ जाए ठीक है दिस इज ब्रॉन्कस राइट एंड देर डायमीटर इज स्मॉलर देन द ट्रेकिया एंड देन ईच ब्रॉन्कस वेन फर्दर स्प्लिट इन टू स्मॉलर ट्यूबलेक स्ट्रक्चर राइट इट इज स्प्लिटिंग इन टू ब्रॉन्क्योल्स एंड दीज ब्रॉन्क्योल्स आर कॉल्ड एज टर्मिनल ब्रॉन्क्योल्स ठीक है टर्मिनल ब्रॉन्क्योल्स और ये टर्मिनल ब्रॉन्क्यूल्स फर्दर जब स्प्लिट करते हैं इनटू स्मॉलर ब्रॉन्क्यूल्स दे आर कॉल्ड एज रेस्पिरेटरी ब्रॉन्क्यूल्स आर यू गेटिंग मी अंस आपको समझ आ रहा है यस कैन यू नेम द गैशियस एक्सचेंज पाथवे द फर्स्ट वन इज अब अब द ट्रेकिया एंड द सेकंड वन इज द ब्रॉन्काई Very good, bronchi. And how many bronchi are present here? Uh, two. Very good. How many trachea are present here? One. Very good. Uh, three. Very good. And oh, trachea is only one. Trachea is only one. Right. And then the bronchi are further splitting into bronchioles. Bronchioles. But which type of bronchiole? that is the terminal bronchioles terminal, terminal bronchioles very good terminal bronchioles are further splitting into smaller narrower tube like structures and they are called as respiratory bronchioles theek hai acha aur respiratory bronchiole phir split karte hain into smaller tube like structures isse chota main bana hi nahi pa rahi hu with the help of my pen right so but but we can say that they are even smaller and they end up in um, alveoli right and this tubular -like structure that is entering into the alveoli that is called as alveolar duct alveolar duct is that clear so what is the uh, basic aapke paas jo hierarchy hai wo kya hai the biggest one is trachea you can see here then bronchi two bronchi and then terminal bronchioles and then respiratory bronchioles These are the respiratory bronchioles, even smaller. ठीक है ये देखो. These are bronchioles, bronchi, bronchioles, terminal bronchioles, then respiratory bronchioles, and then the alveolar duct. Alveolar duct, ये black वाला ये जो structure है ना ये है, जो के alveoli के अंदर enter हो रहा है. Right? Is that clear? Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. And and then here you can also see. many alveoli present at the end of the uh, alveolar duct now if i show you from the inner side you can also see here in this diagram that this is the terminal bronchiole right here this is the terminal bronchiole and this is the respiratory bronchiole and this is the alveolar duct and each alveolar duct ending up into alveoli and if i magnify or if i show you the alveolar structure in a little more detail you can see here that the alveolar this is the alveolar duct that is entering into the alveoli right so each alveolus is supplied with the deoxygenated blood and oxygenated blood what oxygenated blood is brought back to the heart deoxygenated blood is supplied to the lungs okay pulmonary artery supplies deoxygenated blood into the surrounding of the alveoli and the pulmonary veins takes it stay vein takes it back to the heart right and as you can see that heart is near to the to the lungs so that's why the pressure that was created by the right atrium is a right ventricle is lesser than the left ventricle remember in circulatory system we have talked about right okay so this is the main structure now i want to i want you to have a look on this table this is a very important table right and uh, this table give is giving us lots of information simultaneously at the same time right you can see mm, this is giving us information about the number of those tube like structures approximate diameter cartilage whether it's present or not goblet cells where they are present where they are not present smooth muscle cilia and site of gaseous exchange because many of the mcqs and cis are asked from this table and if you memorize this table very 
efficiently, you will be able to solve lots of MCQs and you will be able to relate lots of MCQs in CI's exam, MCQs papers, paper, right? So airways first trick, how much trick are present? How many? There are only one, right? Uh, two bronchi present, terminal bronchioles number is even more, even more, even more, and even more because it is increasing the surface area, alveoli. So that's why there are so many alveoli present in each lung. Approximate diameter, and this diameter you don't need to memorize, but you should be able to uh, relate it to one another. That trachea is the broadest, then smaller, then smaller, and even smaller, smaller, smaller. So its diameter is only 2.5, 250 micrometer, and we started from 1.8 centimeter, right? The biggest unit is centimeter and the smallest is nanometer, obviously, but here is micrometer, the diameter. Okay? And the cartilage presence is in trachea and in bronchi, bronchi. Not in bronchioles, not in alveolar duct, not in alveolar, because this is, here they can ask you some reason that why cartilage is not present in the terminal bronchioles and the respiratory bronchioles. Yes, any clue? Ans? Ans, any clue? Why the cartilage is not present in the uh, terminal bronchioles, respiratory bronchioles, alveolar duct, and alveoli? And alveoli. Uh, uh, because we do not need to uh, support these structures. These structures don't need the support. Why they don't need the support to, to, get, to be kept open all the time? Related to the diameter? Oh, uh, they uh, they have a very small diameter. Yes, because they have got so small diameter that they don't need to be you know, kept open. The air passage is actually con uh, open, uh, keeping them open all the time because the ventilation is taking place continuously, right? So that's why the cartilage is not necessary in trick in uh, bronchioles and alveolar duct and alveoli. Goblet cells, goblet cells are present in, uh, what are goblet cells, first of all, Ans? What are goblet cells? Uh, Ma'am, they are cells which basically um, uh, emit mucus. Uh, very good. They make mucus by exocytosis, by protein synthesis, and then uh, they release mucin out, right? The detail uh, we'll, we will study, inshallah, in our next class. But the goblet cells are basically uh, helps in production of the mucin protein. Mucin protein is the, uh, as it's a protein, so it must be formed by the process of protein synthesis. And then they are removed out of the cell from goblet cells, right? Uh, uh, and through process of exocytosis. And uh, this these goblet cells are not present in the terminal bronchioles, respiratory bronchioles, alveolar duct and alveoli. Why? Why they aren't present? Any reason, Anas? Uh, sorry, Adil? No, I don't know. Ans? Koi clue? Relate karo na in seizon ko. Dekho, jaha Abba, Abba, cartilage, jaha cartilage. Kar sakti hai. Goblets, why go goblet cells are not present in the terminal bronchioles, respiratory bronchioles, alveolar duct and alveoli? They are present in trachea. Clocks for very good that the terminal bronchioles and respiratory bronchioles diameter is so small that if they, they will be goblet cells they will produce mucus and if mucus will get stuck there obviously it's a sticky material stuck or gaseous exchange possible yoga pathway block or you can say there will be less air that is getting into the lungs or into the alveoli Right, there will be very little air that will somehow bypass or somehow leak out from the mucus and then reach to the alveoli. Okay, so that's why Adela, did you get it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, smooth muscles. Kya hote? Anyone? What are smooth muscles? Where you have studied smooth muscles first and what they were doing there? Adil. Protein synthesis. Smooth muscles, bitte. Kaha padi? 
किस स्ट्रक्चर में पड़े मैम ब्लड वेसल्स वेरी गुड व्हाट दे वर डूइंग देयर इन द ब्लड वेसल्स ब्लड वेसल्स में क्या रोल प्ले करते थे हेल्प इन द मूवमेंट ऑफ ब्लड हम्म वेरी नाइस जनाब डू यू थिंक सो थिंक ओवर इट इट वंस मोर आंसर आप बताएं Do you have any idea? Do you have any clue? बताओ क्वेश्चन फिर से रिपीट कर सकती हैं। What what the what was the function of smooth muscles in the arteries and veins? अब अब ये arteries and veins के अंदर it was to uh, act as a support to the uh, blood vessels. So so what? Support in which sense? So that they don't collapse, so that they don't close, right? So smooth muscles, wherever they are present, they are present always in the pathways, tube-like structures, and this airway is also one of the structure that is made up of tube-like structures, like trachea, bronchus. They are all tube-like structures. They also need support to be kept open. So that's why the smooth muscles are present in the trachea, bronchus, and terminal bronchioles. Nowhere else. right because the other structures are so small that they don't need the support from the smooth muscles now what about cilia what are cilia adil microscopic tube like structures that help in the movement of mucus up the trachea very good so uh, you can see here uh, on the screen that cilia are present in trachea cilia are present in bronchi they are also present in terminal bronchioles and in the respiratory bronchioles what why what do you think that why cilia are present here as you said the cilia are involved in the uh, in uh, throwing the mucus out but here they are in the respiratory bronchiole as there are no goblet cells so it means there will be no mucus that will be produced so why cilia are present here and same with the uh, terminal bronchioles and the respiratory bronchioles agar mucus niche aa gaya to just in case very nice very good and if the because mucus is a sticky material it can come down the trachea and down the bronchus and uh, to the terminal bronchioles and to the respiratory bronchioles that's why they need to be that mucus needs to be removed out propelled out right and if that it will enter into the lungs or into the alveoli it may cause uh, uh, less exchange of gases right now very good uh, adil next is the distribution or you can say so the site for the gas exchange where the gas exchange is possible between the blood and the airway yes there is no gas exchange in trachea no not in bronchus not in terminal bronchioles and not even in respiratory bronchioles why what could be the reason behind it because the all of these structures have got multi layers of cells multi layers of smooth muscles smooth muscle fibers are present and they're making up a thick wall right the distance for diffusion is very uh uh ha big or high so that's why uh there is no gas exchange that is possible because the blood is not near to the uh airway so that the efficient uh, diffusion could uh, is possible so for diffusion to happen the um, because the gas exchange always takes place by the process of diffusion so the diff to diff uh, for the diffusion to happen the distance for diffusion is matters a lot राइट सो बाकी स्ट्रक्चर्स में डिस्टेंस फॉर डिफ्यूजन ज्यादा होगा एंड इन द एलवेलर डॉक्ट एंड एलवेल द डिस्टेंस फॉर डिफ्यूजन इज वेरी लेस सो दैट्स वेर डिफ्यूजन इज पॉसिबल इज दैट क्लियर इज दिस टेबल क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू ठीक है कार्टलेज ओनली टू स्ट्रक्चर्स गॉबलेट सेल्स ओनली टू स्ट्रक्चर्स राइट दैट इज ट्रेकिया एंड ब्रॉकस बिकॉज दे नीड सपोर्ट दे नीड टू प्रोड्यूस म्यूकस smooth muscles in three structures uh, cilia in four structures and gaseous exchange only in two structures that is alveoli and 
alveolar duct no where else rest of the things are no because you sometime is uh, uh, examiners sometimes give you some tables for the tick and cross and this table is a is one of the table that can be given as a tick cross uh, question in your final exam is that clear reasoning can also be asked as i asked you right and it can be given in, as a tick cross table is that clear now let's have a look on the photomicrographs of these structures first before going into the details right uh, like suppose if you see trachea and if i make a cross section of this trachea and if i show you a small part here this a structure is trachea why because it has got this layer is the thin layer that i can see here this is the ciliated epithelial cells or cilia right and this layer this is the broader layer wait let me change the color this layer right that is starting from here and ending here right at its base there is a basement membrane present and this is basically the presence of the mucus glands or you can say the goblet cells that is present here right and what about this broadest region this is the basic thing that makes me identify this diagram as the photomicrograph of transmission electron micrograph of uh, uh, we can say um, of uh, uh, trachea that is the this broad region is basically the uh, cartilage right and this cartilage is present as a c-shaped ring in trachea right that's why it's trachea and trachea does not show us any convolution of the membrane like this and in uh, bronchi and in bronchioles you will see these folded structures here and these folded structures also have these are the nuclei of the different cells right because they also have got ciliated epithelial cells and this region is showing us the presence of cartilage but the difference between the presence of cartilage in bronchi and trachea is that is bronchus and trachea is that in bronchus the cartilage is present in the form of blocks right uh, but ma'am here there is a small part that is given to us how can i say that this cartilage is tracheal cartilage and this cartilage is the bronchial cartilage this is bronchi not only because of the cartilage present this is bronchi because it has also shown us the uh, membrane folded membranes on the inner surface right it also shows us the basement membrane and uh, the the cells present here and uh, like the other other photomicrograph right but the blocks of cartilage can also be seen in let me show you the photomicrograph this is the c-shaped cartilage ring this one right can you see this right yes. this shows that this dark band right this is a c-shaped cartilage ring and inner to it this is smooth muscle right so that's why it can be identified as trachea now if you see this photomicrograph this is uh, bronchi. How it is bronchi? Because they are two present here. Number one. Number two, these blue bands are basically showing us the blocks of cartilage. They are present as this. Right? Ye ek block. This is another 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 block. They can overlap, right? And this is another block. But they are present in the form of blocks. Right? So this is something that help us to identify the uh, bronchi and trachea. Right? Is that clear? So this is a section of bronchus showing the three blood vessels near to it because the red blood cells can be seen here. One, two, and three. Right? And uh, the rest of the uh, structure is bronchi because they have the blocks of cartilage in it right so this is how you can identify it now the third one that has got even more convolutions and there are there is no cartilage present here in its surrounding then ma'am what are these structures this is the basement membrane right and this is the uh, convoluted membrane that is present in as the 
bronchioles, right? And these are the terminal bronchioles. And they're in, they're uh, closely present with the, you can say the alveolar cavities. These are the alveolar cavities or the air sacs. And these are the identifying features that can tell us that this is a bronchiole, right? So this is a bronchiole, this is bronchus, and this is trachea. Is that clear? Any question? Ans Adil? In this uh, no, identification of the no, photomicrograph no. of trachea and bronchi and bronchioles, right? From this chapter, examiner give you the photomicrographs to identify the structures. So it's equally important. Okay? Now, inshallah, in our next class, we will talk about the uh, warming and cleaning effect because now, now we are done with the identification of the trachea and bronchi and bronchioles and now we will see that how they are adapted to perform their function and what is uh, their function the function of the trachea and the bronchi or the cilia and the gobbler cells wherever they are present uh, they are producing a warming and cleaning effect inshallah we'll see it right so bye for now inshallah we will talk about these functions in our next class.